can I avoid copyright? No, probably not. Actually, I've never gotten an Ingve copyright strike, so maybe he's not so crazy about that stuff. But anyways, today we're talking about Ingve, obviously. We're gonna we're gonna shred. That's what we're doing today. No, actually, I'm, I'm not much of a shredder, but I'm gonna try to show you some of the stuff I learned from Ingve. I've actually taken a lot of stuff away from Ingve, and one of the things that jumped out to me are Ingve's amazing patterns that he puts inside of his harmonic minor and you know Aeolian modes and all that stuff. So we're gonna talk about some of that stuff today. I'm gonna show you how to use it yourself. If you're not familiar with these hack videos, you can get the tabs down below. I'm gonna show you an Ingve-inspired lick, and then kind of turn it on its head and turn it into a us-inspired lick. So. Here we go, Ingve time. All right, so the hack, what is the hack exactly? Well, like I said, one of the biggest things I learned from Ingve were his pattern. So the first thing we're gonna do is this. Oh, insert a thousand players who can play that like twice as fast and twice as clean as I just did. But that's the hack. That pattern right there is something I learned so early on and it was inspiring because it made me realize that you could practice things like scales and just running around the fingerboard in these musical patterns that were just fun. I had a lot of fun doing that kind of stuff. So that's why I wanted to start with this one. And then we're gonna kind of take this concept and we're gonna twist it and turn it in a couple different ways that um, you might not be expecting. So the first thing here is this. And we are thinking this whole thing out of our, I mean, it's, it's basically like harmonic minor is what I was gonna go for, but what happened is my 16th fret is fretting out really bad. Oh, there, because uh, the frets are worn out on this guitar. So I couldn't quite do it totally harmonic minor, so I, I uh, kind of adapted one, <laughs> one note in there. But um, it's basically harmonic minor. I would have to go like this. Right there, that note is spreading out really bad. So, um... There, that, that's what it's supposed to be, but I, I changed it a little bit just for the sake of the video. But essentially it's harmonic minor. So we're gonna go like this. We're starting out on fourth fret of the high string. Now everything is alternate picked. My picking is nowhere near on Ingve level. Very few people are actually on that level of, uh, you know, accuracy with their right hand. But uh, it's a good way to work on it, you know, stuff like this. So we're gonna go fourth fret on the high E string. And I, I do want to point out that I am tuned down a half step. I forgot to say that earlier in the video. Ingve is pretty much always half step down. I'm a half step down on this one. So we're gonna play fourth fret on the high E string. And I'm gonna go to seventh fret on the high E string and back to fifth fret. And then I'm gonna go back to seventh fret, okay? And I'm, remember, and I'm realizing that my delay is still on. And that's the pattern right there. Even practicing just that is fun. Really good, you know, picking exercise. Okay, now what happens is we shift up here and we're gonna go fifth fret on the high E string and then eighth fret on the high E string and then seventh and eighth. You can see how the pattern is just repeating. And this is actually the first thing I ever learned from Ingve, this pattern, or this Ingve-ish idea. And on the tabs, I only tabbed them out uh, one time each, but you could repeat these as many times as you want. You know, do it four times. Okay? It just sounds great. It's just a fun one to play. So then we're gonna go up here. You know my, I'm focusing whenever I have my hair behind both ears. <laughs> that, that's the telltale. Uh, sign. Now we're gonna go 7th fret of the high E string, and then 10th fret, and then 8th fret, and then 10th fret. So, okay, so. Shifting up again, you're gonna go 8th fret on the high E string, 12th fret, 10th fret, and then 12th fret. Okay, so already we have a, a big portion of the neck is done. Like I said, Think of this as being harmonic minor. Um, I adapted one note. It's kind of like this mix between harmonic minor and Aeolian because of that fretting out note that I had. So I just kind of rolled with what I had. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go 10th fret on the highest string, 13, 12, 13. So you always have like one stationary note and then these other two notes that kind of bounce back and forth. That's the way it kind of works in my mind, the way I'm viewing it. So. Now we have one more here. Now this is what I did when I played it for the first time for you guys. I went 12th fret, 15th, 13th, and then 15th. Okay? So technically if you wanted it to be harm like full on harmonic minor, you would probably want to go to 16th fret on the high string. So you'd go 12, 16, 13, 16. Or at least it's gonna sound more harmonic minor. So. Okay, 
So there's that one, and then of course work on descending and all those kind of things, but that's the first idea. <laughs> Okay, so let's scale it back to a normal human level. I'm going to show you what I kind of like ended up doing with these ideas and concepts of these patterns is um, first thing I did was I put it in a major scale. You know, I think that's really cool because a lot of times Ingve is very minor a lot of the times, you know, like I said, Aeolian, uh, Phrygian, and then uh, uh, Harmonic Minor. I'm like, what are the names of the these scales? I'm, my brain just went blank. So I chose to go right into Ionian, your major scale. And taking the idea of kind of that one stationary note and then two notes that bounce around, and you can take the idea from Ingve and turn it into your own thing. So this is what I did. <laughs> And there you have it. You've, you've officially turned Yngwie into a happy little lick. So what's happening here exactly is I, I kind of implemented two things. Change the scale and I started doing string skipping. And so, you know, a lot of Yngwie's patterns, uh, you know, Yngwie again, he can play wherever he wants to. You know, he's incredible. But a lot of times his patterns follow a line. And uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to break out of that line and, and you can do that real easily by string skipping, you know. Much larger interval between your notes. And uh, I just, I thought it sounded cool. You know, it's almost like the kind of Paul Gilbert -y, uh idea, but uh, a little twist on that as well. So I'm playing 12th fret on the high E string. That is my stationary note. Now the next two notes are the notes that bounce back and forth, just like the Yngwie lick. So I go to the G, so I skip the B completely, and I go 14, 13, 14. So. Okay. Boom, right there, it already is sounding very different from the Ingve thing, but the inspiration is directly linked to that one. You know, I'm not trying to say I came up with this myself. I stole it from Ingve and just kind of tweaked it a little bit. Now I shift up and this guy, now you could keep going, I only do two here, but um, I go to 14 on the high E string and I'm gonna go 16, 14, 16 on the G. Okay, so. And again, like I said, you could keep going. However you wanna do it. Um, but that one is, it's just a good way to do it. Mix it up a little bit. Take your Yngwie, make it happy. Turn it into, uh, you know, Yngwie Majorstein. The third one is ascending with the pattern across all six strings. <laughs> Now, a lot of times when Ingve goes through a scale, you know, his patterns are much more on single string or like two string ideas. And when he ascends, he tends to, he just kind of like blazes through. You know, whatever he does, he does his Ingve thing. He has a few patterns that he does, but um, typically not these very kind of like repetitive patterns that he does on single strings. I don't know why just kind of his thing. He does what he wants. Again, he's Yngwie. So um, what I thought was, I was like, well, what if we kind of did some open strings and started low and walked all the way up, key of E, that way we can keep it all where we can have those open strings. And kind of, it, it starts out very Yngwie, and near the end, it doesn't really sound like it. It almost has like a Nuno vibe to it to me. But uh, we're going like this. So it's open on the low E string. That's our stationary note. The open strings are our stationary notes. And then the next two notes are the bouncing around notes that we've had this whole time. So I'm gonna go three, two, three on the low E string. So, and all I do is I do an open string on every single string. Nice thing about key of E, open strings across the board. So you're gonna go open, three, two, three on the A string. So those two are the same. Now I kept it in octaves. So we could keep the same, you know, the two of the three notes are always the same. So I go to the D string and I'm gonna go open and I go five, four, five on the D. What does that sound like? It sounds like a melody of something. Uh, on the G, it's open, five, four, five. Now we do another octave. So we're gonna go open and then open on the B, eight, seven, eight. On the high string, open, eight, seven, eight. However you would do that one, there's, there's some melody in there. 
But you can hear how it doesn't sound like Ingve anymore. And that's gonna be it, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Hope you got something out of this video. Like I said, Ingve is one of those guys. If you're not a shredder, learn some of Ingve stuff because you don't have to be a shredder to appreciate it, man. It is some really cool stuff. If you would subscribe, like the video, lots of more lessons, lots of more, lots of more lessons headed your way. And uh, other than that, if you made it here to the end of the video, let's say what what's today's comment? Leave a comment hashtag. Uh, End it shreddy. Yeah! <laughs>